You are holy. You are mighty. You are worthy. Worthy of praise. I will follow. And I will live my life for you. You're my prince of peace, and I will live my life for you. You are holy. You are mighty. You are worthy. Worthy of praise. It's amazing how we worship and praise Him, but it's actually meant for our good. God is not excited as we praise Him. God is, uh, you know, blessing us as we praise Him. So praise and worship is as though as we are glorifying Him, it is actually reflecting it back. He's reflecting it back on us as blessing. So it's a joy to praise Him. You know, worship actually means surrendering ourselves completely. God wants us to surrender ourselves completely so that He can take over us and you know use us as His instrument. So let's thank Him for what He is doing in us. One more song, then we'll go into the study. <coughs> Once again. Upon your sacrifice, you became nothing, poured out to death. Many times, wonder at your gift of life. I'm in that place once again. I'm in that place once again. Once again, I look upon the cross where you died. Humbled by your mercy, and I'm broken inside. Once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my life. Once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my life. Now you are exalted to the highest place. 
blessing of the heavens One day I'll bow For now I marvel at your saving grace I'm full of praise once again I'm full of praise once again Once again I look upon the cross where you die Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross my friend. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, my friend. Once again I look upon the cross where you died, humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Let's pray. Father, it's a privilege that you've given us to worship you. We worship you because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and you're worthy of all our love and affection. You're worthy and that is why we adore you and bow down before you. You are our Savior, you are our Messiah, you are the Alpha, you are the Omega, you are the beginning and the end, you are the Redeemer and our friend. You are the Prince of Peace and you have been victorious in our lives. We thank you, O Lord, for the cross that enable us to come into the presence of the Almighty God, to hear his voice and to obey him in our lives. We thank you because the scriptures have been written so that we may be corrected, strengthened, and we may have everything that is needed to live a life that glorifies your name here on earth. And we surrender ourselves completely to you this evening. Take us, O Lord, and use us as your instruments. Speak to us this evening. Help us to hear you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right, so welcome once again. After a two-week gap, we are back in the book of Luke, right? So turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 20. Gospel of Luke, chapter 20. Right? We have a passage that is from verse 1 to verse 18. Okay? Luke, chapter 20, verse 1 to 18. Right, we're going to read one verse each person. Right, so open your Bibles, and we'll start reading one verse each person. Okay, so we will go from uh, Priyanka. You'll start with verse one, then Annie, then Matthew, and then Ajit. Right, so one verse each person. Luke chapter twenty, verse one to eighteen. Okay, Priyanka, you can start. One day, as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel. The chief priests and the scribes with the elders came up. Okay. Tell us by what authority you are doing these things, they said. Who gave you this authority? Ajit. Uh, should I read? Yeah, yeah. Third. Okay. Uh, he replied, I will also ask you a question. Tell me. Uh, John's baptism, was it from heaven or of human origin? Okay. Back to Priyanka. And they discussed it with one another, saying, if we say from heaven, he will say, why did you not believe him? 
but if we say from men all the people will stone us because they are persuaded that john was a prophet so they answered we don't know where it was from and jesus said said to them neither will i tell you by what authority i do these things he went on to tell the people this parable a man planted a vineyard rented it to some farmers and went away for a long time at harvest time he sent a servant to the tenants so they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard but the tenants beat him and sent him away empty handed and he sent another servant but they also beat and treated him shamefully and sent him away empty handed he sent still a third and they wounded him and threw him out then the owner of the vineyard said uh, what shall i do i will send my son whom i love perhaps they will respect him uh, verse what but when the tenants saw him they said to themselves this is the heir let us kill him so that the inheritance may be ours so they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him what then will the owner of the vineyard do to them uh, verse 16 he will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyards to others when the people heard this they said god forbid but he looked directly at them and said what then is this that is written the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone everyone has everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces but he on him it falls will be crushed uh, verse 19 the teacher of the law and the chief priest looked for a way to arrest him immediately because they knew he had spoken this parable against them but they were afraid of the people okay thank you that was awesome i actually asked you to read only till verse 18 okay but verse 19 is part of that right so i was going to read the verse 19 but ajit wisely read it thank you all right so here is a situation where jesus is confronting a question and through the question he is confronting the people who are challenging him okay so they are challenging the authority of jesus now jesus had already told the 12 disciples the apostles you know to expect that there will be suffering when they reach jerusalem he said the son of man uh, must suffer many things and he will be rejected the elders and the chief priests and the scribes they are going to arrest him and then he is going to be slain and then he will be raised up on the third day luke chapter 9 he gives them a very uh, accurate prophecy about what is going to happen okay so jesus knew fully what was coming and he was not at all afraid of it that is why you know this confrontation is very very important in this uh, present context okay what we are going through so in this chapter we are going to meet three groups of religious leaders okay first verse says one day as jesus was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel the chief priests the scribes and the elders came up and said to him chief priests the scribes and the elders right now the this is um you know uh, this is uh, the three groups of people that are challenging jesus for understanding from with whose authority is doing all these things see because jesus had just cleansed the temple and he had called them thieves so now they have to catch him on his words so that you know they can bring some charge against him he has now accused us of being thieves so now we have to catch him on some mistake that he'll make on what he says so that we can arrest him and make him an enemy of the whole state okay he'll be an enemy who will be put put behind bars and he will be punished okay so that is their um, trick that is a trick now so they are coming for a face to face confrontation with jesus now when you look at this passage you should also understand that there is more to it than uh, just trying to trick jesus right now uh, when we understand that this is a passover and the ritual at the passover is that they have to bring a lamb for the sacrifice but the lamb should be carefully observed that it does not have any blemish it does not have any defect that kind of lamb only can be sacrificed right 
So the word that is used here in chapter 20 verse 17 is, uh, but he looked directly at them and said, what then is this written? The stone that the builders rejected. See, rejected is a word that comes in chapter 9 verse 22 also. Chapter Luke chapter 9 verse 22 also, the same verse comes, rejected. Okay. Uh, saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Rejected. The word rejected actually means to reject after careful observation, to reject after careful investigation. So the Jews had to examine the Passover lamb from the 10th day to the 14th day. 10th day to the 14th day they had to observe the, the lamb just to make sure, carefully examine the lamb, so the lamb does not have any blemish, any defect. Okay, You'll find that in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 6, the procedure, how they select this lamb. So Jesus Christ is the lamb of God. You know, John chapter 1, when John sees, John the Baptist sees him coming, he says, Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1, verse 29. So Jesus is the lamb of God and he was watched and he was tested by his enemies during the final week. Now, they did not find any fault in him, but still they rejected him. See? In spite of all that they learned about him, they still rejected him. Now, also remember, at that point of time, Jesus was also investigating them. He was also examining them. As they are questioning Jesus, he is questioning them back. And what does it reveal? His question actually reveals their ignorance. It reveals their hatred. It reveals the hardness and unbelief of their hearts. It reveals their ignorance, their hatred and the unbelief of their hearts. Okay. So, uh, this is why Jesus is questioning them back. Okay. And it's also a good tool to use. No? When somebody asks you a question, make them think by asking them a question back. Don't always give pat answers, you know, here ready-made answers, here is the answer. That will not help them, that will not make them think. So it's better to ask them questions so that it will make them think. So here is, uh, you know, uh, Jesus questioning them. So, uh, after the cleansing of the temple, uh, the religious establishment of Jerusalem is now angry. Okay. Jesus Coming to the temple soon after that made situation more tense because they thought he will go into hiding, you know, after he cleansed the temple. But he's back in the temple and he's teaching people. See? So now they have to go and ask this question. See, they are people of authority. They have authority to throw out any person from the premises of the temple. They have any uh, right, they have every right to punish the person who uh, messes with the decorum of the temple. So now they want to ask and clarify with Jesus. By what authority are you doing these things? See, So if you don't have the authority, who gave it to you? That's the question. See, Now, authority is a very, very important thing that is needed. Whether it is social, uh, whether it is political, whether it is religious. Every organization demands authority. If there is no one who is in authority, there will be confusion. Right? If we don't know who is the boss, then that will cause a lot of problems. Right? Uh, the chief priest and the scribes and these uh, elders, they claim that their authority came from Moses. Why? Because Moses gave the law. Through Moses, actually, God gave the law, but they say Moses gave the law. So, in that law, the tribe of Levi is set apart to serve in the sanctuary. So, the chief priests and the scribes come from the Levite tribes. The scribes were the students of the law. They claim that their right was the rabbis, you know, they, they are teachers of the law, right? So the interpretation of the rabbis is what they study and they teach. So they are studying the law. So that gives us the right to question you, right? Now, the elders, elders come uh, from the leaders of the families and clans. They are chosen, they are chosen because of their experience. They are chosen because of their wisdom. So, all these men were sure of their authority, right? We have the authority to be in this position. 
the chief priests has the authority the scribes have the authority the elders are also having this authority and they are not afraid to use that authority to confront jesus but they want to know how how come jesus does it who is your authority who gave you the authority see so if jesus is answering okay whichever answer jesus gives he is going to be in trouble if he said i don't have any authority then Jews will say, "Hey, then you came into a place of authority where it is under our authority, and you messed up this place, and you're acting like a prophet without authority." So they have every right to put this, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, uh, somebody who causes trouble, no, troublemaker. They can put him in prison. Okay. So if he says that he has authority from God, then he's going to be trouble with the Romans. if he is claiming to be the messiah the romans need to know that because the messiah is going to overthrow the roman government so during the passover season the romans are very alert they are uh, they are uh, patrolling you know throughout the roman city so that nobody rises up and says i am the messiah they will immediately arrest him and make sure that he doesn't speak in public again okay because that is giving uh, rebellion rioting a chance and they don't want that especially during the passover if anybody claims to be the messiah that guy is finished okay romans will take care of him so if jesus is going to say that he is the messiah they are going to snitch him to the romans see if he says no no i don't have any authority then they are, they have the right to put him in prison because you have messed up our organization you know our organized religion here so what does jesus do he turns the tables on them and puts them on the defensive right so first of all he asked them a question back and then he quotes the scripture also okay but let's let's go in step by step this tell us by what authority was to you do these things or who it is that gave you this authority he answered them i also will ask you a question now tell me was the baptism of john from heaven or from man what a simple question right Jesus asking them about John the Baptist everybody knows about John the Baptist he came before Jesus and John established himself as a prophet okay so Jesus using John the Baptist for two reasons John had pointed to Jesus and introduced him to the nation okay? John chapter 1 you will find that John the Baptist introduced Jesus to the nation right so John came before Jesus and these same people the same religious establishment had rejected john completely right so rejecting john is equal to rejecting jesus okay rejecting john is equal to jesus why because john introduced jesus to the nation now second thing is um uh, if we disobey truth which we already know god will not reveal new truth to us okay if i know that something is wrong and i keep doing it or i know that god wants me to do something and i don't do it then god won't show me the second step okay he he has given me the instruction to obey the first step if i am not doing that he will not show me the second or third step why because obedience rests on this if i don't obey the first step then why should god reveal to me further truth right so jesus uses the same principle there and he says uh if you don't answer this why should i answer your question see god has already revealed john to you right you didn't accept him then why would you accept me so i don't have to answer this question to you see but what is the question that he asks tell us by what authority you do these things and he says tell me was the baptism of john from heaven or from man okay now the explanation was also given there and they discussed it with one another so the immediately you know it's like uh, the basketball team you know when they take a break they go into a huddle and they start talking okay what to do who's what, what do you answer here so these religious people they go into a huddle and they discuss it among themselves say, if we say from heaven he will say why did you not believe him see because they did not believe they did not go and take baptism with john they did not repent of their sins john pointed to their sins this pointed john pointed to them and says come repent but they did not repent they did not accept john as a prophet of god So if we say from man then the people here who are listening to Jesus they all believe that John was a prophet and they will throw stones at us see so both ways we are in a fix 
so they wanted to put jesus in a fix now jesus put them in a fix so here is a group of people now they are afraid to speak the truth right they are afraid to speak the truth because they are in trouble if they speak the truth they are in trouble right so the best thing is to play dumb tell them that you know we don't know the answer right that's an easy way so um he said uh answer that they did not know where it came from we don't know what it came where it came from so it is a yes or no question or a true or false question kind of no you have to choose either of this either it's from man or it's from god don't know is not an answer right so that's why jesus says i also am not going to tell you see the religious leaders were in a dilemma no matter what they g- answer they gave they would be in trouble so did they decided to play dumb not give an answer okay so this is a dishonest way of asking a question they avoided answering jesus's question now if jesus had given them an answer directly i got my authority from god huh? their hearts are not prepared to receive that answer see if they had they had openly said that you know john the baptist was from god they have already disobeyed what john the baptist told them this is what god said see so they have disobeyed god when john the baptist preached so now they are held accountable when jesus speaks this truth to them their hearts are not prepared to accept it see people who are in disobedience they will continue to be in disobedience when god confronts them see it's like you know there are two uh, boats you know two ships uh, in the port and the sails of both the ports are open okay and the holy spirit moves from one direction to the other direction the holy spirit is like wind passing through according to which direction your sail is set the boats will move in different directions same holy spirit moving two boats will move in two different directions why because the sail is towards that direction okay sail is set towards that direction it's like moses and pharaoh both were confronted with god's message moses moved into obedience because his sail was set towards obedience and pharaoh moved towards hardness of heart because his sail was set towards that direction see so if you have set your mind on disobedience you will continue in your disobedience if you set your mind on obedience then when the holy spirit gives you the message you will choose to obey see so when your hearts are not prepared willing to obey no matter how many messages we hear we will still have hardened hearts because that's the direction we have set our sails on right so if the son of god gives a gives a message to them even then they are going to reject it so god jesus knew that you'll see the same thing happen again when jesus goes to face herod pontius pilate sends him to herod king herod tells jesus to tell him something jesus doesn't open his mouth to herod not even once you know we say okay jesus could have shared the gospel with herod no john the baptist was a prisoner under herod and herod kept visiting him daily and all the messages that john the baptist said herod heard but he never obeyed see so to a person who has not obeyed the message of john the baptist jesus does not have to preach anything he said whatever i wanted to tell you i have told you you still haven't obeyed then why should i speak now so jesus kept his mouth shut he had nothing to say to herod because he had not obeyed the little that he had already received from god through john the baptist you see so when god speaks to us repeatedly and we don't obey god has nothing more to say to us and that's what jesus also did with these people see he didn't have to tell them what authority has come from they know but they don't want to obey they don't want to submit to him so that is where rebellion comes in so they have rejected in the past and now they are rebelling against god jesus wants to expose them and he tells a wonderful parable okay now see when jesus tells his parable and then he quotes the old testament 
these fellows understand and that is why they they are looking for an opportunity to lay hands on them they understood that this this message was spoken about them they perceived that they had he had told this parable against them see so they are not dumb people they are very wise you know they can connect two and two and they understand that jesus was talking about them see so they immediately understood when jesus speak, spoke about the vineyard see all through the book of isaiah god speaks about the vineyard parable see in the book of psalms psalm chapter 80 he speaks about the vineyard the vineyard is israel see always in the old testament whenever you see this vineyard example being used we know that that is israel so these fellows also know immediately that god is jesus speaking about the nation of israel see god blessed that nation abundantly you know he gave a land that was rich flowing with milk and honey and all that he was asking them is you know obey my commandments give me the spiritual harvest that i deserve that's all that god asked them see instead of being grateful to god for whatever they have received all the blessings they have received they started becoming ungrateful they were thankless they were hypocrites you see so god had rejected them god had you know left them and they rejected all the messengers that came one after the other from god all the prophets they rejected and this was a this was like a uh, what is it a routine god was sending them prophet after prophet after prophet some of the prophets actually demonstrated what god wanted to communicate to them in physical form like for example isaiah isaiah was walking around like a captured so- soldier you know a uh, soldier who's captured in war he was walking around uh, you know uh, 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 as a prisoner of war and uh, people kept asking him why are you walking like this we have not faced any war isaiah said you are going to face you know why you are going to walk like me because you are continuing in your disobedience god will take you and make you slaves in a foreign country you will walk like a prisoner of war so he was demonstrating it in his life Uh, our man jeremiah was carrying a yoke on his shoulder for many days and people asked him why are you carrying a yoke on your shoulder he said i'm carrying it now to tell you this message you are going to carry a yoke soon see if you continue in your disobedience then there is a uh, prophet called um, hosea hosea was go- asked to commanded to go and marry a prostitute called gomer and he married this lady and he brought him home as a housewife and he loved her with all his heart you know he took care of her and he had three children with them with her and three children's names you know we, you find that uh, very very uh, strange names that god commanded um, hosea to give to his children and the names were you know first name was jesreel jesreel means god scatters then the second child was a girl and her name god said you know put lo ruhamma as the as the name of the daughter what does it mean it means not loved unloved you know and the third was again a boy and he said put the name as lo ami lo ami means not my people god scatters not loved not my people so imagine him, him calling the son you know jasreel jasreel which means god scatters god scatters and his neighbor listens to this and he comes and asks hosea uh, why you put this horrible name for your child god scatters uh? what does it mean and he has to explain to them because you of your diso- because of our disobedience god is going to scatter us we are going to lose your land you are going to lose israel you are going to be a slave in a foreign country see then he says unloved unloved hey you have not loved me you know you have loved someone else then again you are not my people i have chosen you as my people but you have behaved as though you are not my people they were unfaithful they were following other gods the children that he god blessed them with they were sacrificing to baal and molech false gods see this was the condition of israel when these prophets came in so repeatedly god was saying stop being unfaithful then hosea's wife gomer goes back to prostitution he goes after she goes after another man commits adultery the word adultery is repeated again and again six times in that book you know prostitute is repeated 22 times in that book and she goes back into prostitution and it breaks this man's heart hosea cries out and god says see this is what now do you feel the pain 
this is how Israel has treated me and I feel that pain. Now go and preach to those people. And Hosea went and preached his heart out. Because he experienced God's pain in his heart. You know? Unfaithful. And then the other word that is repeated in Hosea again and again is return to me. Return to me. Return to me. And he tells Hosea, go and buy her back. Go and purchase Gomer back. Then he goes and purchases this prostitute again. That time she's wounded and she's bleeding and he brings her back and he takes care of her and loves her again. And God says, this is what I'm going to do with Israel. I'm going to bring them back and I'm going to love them even though she has been adulterous. I'm going to take care of her. You know? Imagine Hosea living it out in his life. You know, experiencing that pain in his heart of unfaithfulness and then going and buying her back and taking care of her again and loving her again. Wow. And God says, you know, with that heart, Hosea was able to preach. So these men actually lived those examples in their life and they taught them. They were like visual aids for the people around. God used them like that. But they were willing. They wanted to be the voice of God. It was not pleasing. It was not pleasant, you see. But God wanted them to know the truth. So he did that. Why? Because of idolatry, people did this. Because of ingratitude, they did this. Because of hypocrisy, they did this. And God was telling them, come back. Return to me. Return to me. The guilt and the shame should bring you back to me. You see? Not far away from me. So he tells this uh, example of the tenants. And he says, this is what you're doing right now. The tenants rebelled against the owner. See? You're not grateful for your blessings. You're not joyful in what I have given you. But you're repeatedly hurting the messengers that I send you. Finally, I'm going to send my son. I've sent Jesus, my son. See? And you're going to kill him also. See? So Jesus is pronouncing his own death there as he gives his example. See? Now why would they say that, you know, uh, once the son is dead, the property will belong to me, belong to us. How can that be? The owner can give it to anybody, right? No. See, if the, the farm has no owner, then any man can lay claim to that property. It is an ownerless property. So, yeah, according to the Jewish law, any person can claim ownership to that. So, the tenants would have thought like that. You know, if even the owner is dead, if the son is dead, then the owner will come himself. See, so we'll kill the owner also and we'll kill the son also. Now, the vineyard will be our own. See. So Jesus is telling them, this is how you are thinking right now. You are taking my people away from me and your hearts are far away from me. You are rebelling against me. And God can see right through their hearts, the unfaithfulness of their hearts, the idolatry of their hearts, the hypocrisy of their hearts. And then he speaks about their future. Verse 17 and 18. But he looked directly at them and said, what then is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Quoting Psalm 118 verse 22. Hmm. And he says, you know, they knew the psalm by heart. Hmm. And people had actually shouted from this psalm when Jesus was entering into the city victorious. Right? Psalm 118 verse 26 what they quoted. So he's applying that verse to himself. They proclaim, the people proclaim that I am the Messiah. See? So he now he's claiming that I am the capstone which the builders have rejected. Who are the builders? You guys are the builders. You guys are the experts. You are the religious leaders. You have rejected me. See? The stone, from the Old Testament you will find that the stone is a symbol of God. God and the promised Messiah. Right? So here, Jews did not believe, so they stumble over Jesus and now they are going to be judged. Those who trust in Jesus Christ as the foundation stone, they will say that he is the chief cornerstone. See, So Jesus is the chief cornerstone of the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 says that. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20 says that. He is the chief cornerstone of the church. So people who stumble on Jesus will be judged. But those who receive him and accept him, he will become their foundation stone. He will become their chief cornerstone. And their lives will be a blessing. 
right? So, you know, in the book of Daniel also, we f- find the stone crushing these civilizations, right? Crushing these statues, right? The smiting stone. So he was warning the Sanhedrin on that day. You're going to destroy yourself coming against me. Okay? You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to be judged coming against me. You think you're judging me, but you're being judged even at this moment. Okay? Now understand that this is the same truth that is going to apply today to those who are religious but reject Jesus. No? They are unbelievers and they are not listening to the warning. This is the same thing that's going to happen to them. Okay. So when they rejected John the Baptist, they sinned against the Father who sent him. When they crucified Jesus, they sinned against the Son. Right? Both these, Jesus was willing to forgive. Third time, they are going to sin against the Holy Spirit. After that, there is no forgiveness. Why? Because that's the third witness. That's the third witness of God to the nation. That is why it is called the unpardonable sin. Right? When the witness of the Holy Spirit is also rejected, where did that come? Through the apostles. God witnessed to them again. That is when they rejected the apostles. Then there is no more forgiveness left. The unpardonable sin. Right? Stoning of Stephen is an action of the the evidence of their rejection. The gospel went from the Jews to the Samaritans. Then from the Samaritans it went to the Gentiles. Now Israel is living in blindness. Why? Because they rejected the witness of the Father. They have rejected the witness of the Son. And they rejected the witness of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. The witness of the Father came through John the Baptist. Witness of the Son came through Jesus himself. And witness of the Holy Spirit came through the Apostles. They rejected all three witnesses. There is no more pardon left for them. That is why it is called the unpardonable sin. Okay. So what is Jesus saying? Jesus is talking about the nature of sin in this passage. We will close with this. right? The more we sin, the worse it becomes. The tenants started off by beating some of the servants, wounding them. Right. But they ended up becoming murderers. When John the Baptist was captured by Herod, these leaders never said anything about John. They did not go to Herod and say, come on, come on, he's a man, he's a prophet, you know, leave him, don't do the sin. No, they've kept silent because John was a threat for them. They allowed Herod to actually get rid of John the Baptist. See, later on they're going to do the same thing with Stephen also. They're going to do the same thing with Jesus also. They're going to ask for Jesus to be crucified. They're going to be there stoning Stephen, see. So they sinned against the Father, they sinned against the Son, and they sinned against the Holy Spirit. Peter repeatedly says that in all his messages to the Jews. So he said, God has no more witness towards you. Okay? He, has, he has pleaded with you, he has begged you, but now he has to move on. You see, He has to move on. So he says, the sin, you may start off with small, small sins, but ultimately you are going to end as murderers. You keep on rejecting, there won't be an end. Sin will consume you and you will end up as in a far worse situation than you started off. Jesus is again warning them, imploring them, turn to me. But they would reject him again and again. So let's not harden our hearts. As God speaks to us, let's check our hearts to see, Lord, am I an idolater? Am I ungrateful? Am I a hypocrite? These three would force us to reject the testimony of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to see the concern that Jesus has for them. They are in their ignorance, they are in their rebellion, but Jesus shows grace and compassion to them. He wants to lead them to a clearer understanding of himself. He wants to lead them to repentance, but they are rejecting him. We see that God is doing the same thing with us. He wants us to be saved. He speaks to us through the prophets, the law, and then he begs us through his son and now he is speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. Help us not to reject this final, final opportunity of grace that we are going to get. Because once we do that, 
there is no more forgiveness for us there must no more pardon left for us but to be judged help us not to stumble on the stone and reject the chief cornerstone who is jesus christ help us to believe in him completely from our hearts in jesus precious name we pray amen